Now you'll be able to hear, right? Yeah, you, you came during the break. That's why. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhitamastoma Vipvishavahai Om Sham Tisham Tishantihi So and switch to Shvetashpatara Upanishad. For so this we have to plug in immediately. Thankfully it is somewhere here. Is the live stream working now? Can you please check while we chant the verse? Because let's see if it works, I don't know. Ajame kam lo hita shukla krishna. Ajame kam lo hita shukla krishna. Bhavif prajaha. Srijamanam Sarupaha Srijamanam Sarupaha Ajohyeko Ajohyeko Jushamano Nushete Jushamano Nushete Jahatyenam Jahatyenam Bhukta Bhogam Ajonyaha yeah, very cryptic verse, we saw that last time. So there are, there are, and it's very badly translated also. And what is it trying to say? It is trying to give a picture of an inner space which one needs to have between oneself and all the other things which are not oneself. That is what it is. So, in the beginning, one thinks that there are, you know, I am as good as the body, I am as good as the mind, I am as good as the senses. So, therefore, here uh, there is a kind of a metaphor given, a very beautiful metaphor. There are three entities discussed and each of them is called Aja. Aja means unborn. You know, three unborn entities. What are these three unborn entities? <laughs> you know, and if it's unborn, it must be infinite. And if it is infinite, there can be only one. You cannot say many infinites. That makes no sense. You know, so if there are three unborn infinite entities, this makes no sense at all. What is this? You know, so here it is separated very beautifully. Ajam ekam. So let's look at the first one. You know, it's, it's a feminine gender. Aja, not Aja hai. Aja. And who is this Aja? Eka, the first one. And what, what is she? She has three colors. What are those colors? Lohita means red. And then Shukla, white. And then Krishna, black. So she's wearing red, black and white. Or she's comprising three colors. She's composed of three colors. Red, black and white. You know. And then what does she do? What is her job? Very interesting. You know. her And she and she keeps, you know, having babies. Bhakti Prajaha. Prijamanam Sarupaha. She keeps cloning herself. Sarupaha means just like herself. They all look like herself. Who? Prajaha. Her offspring, many offspring, keep on looking like herself. Okay, is that cryptic enough? Yes. No. So let's go further and see how much more cryptic can it get. It's a metaphor and we'll explain the metaphor. Then there is the other one who is also Aja. Ajo Kaha Jushamanaha. Jushamanaha means serving this lady. Who is this lady? The one who keeps having babies. Serving this lady one who keeps producing 
serving this lady or being completely attached to this lady, Anushete, keep sleeping. This fellow is sleeping. It is in the masculine gender. Then finally what? Then there is one more Aja. <laughs> Who is this Aja? Will the real Aja, will the real infinite one, which will the real one who is Brahman, please stand up, it is this one. You know, uh, then Jahati Ena Bhukta Bhogaha Anyaha Ajaha. So then finally there is one who says this life of living completely embroiled in the infinitely producing samsara. This is the first, that first Aja is samsara because it is tricolored. It's the three gunas. What are the three gunas? Sattva, Sattva Rajas. Rajas and Tamas. Tamas. Sattva means kind of godly qualities. Rajas means restless, you know, the, the, the principle of motion, imbalanced between restlessness. And Tamas means it is just a uh, way to get out of the bed, that kind of a feeling. You know, sometimes one has that. And uh, so it is the principle of inertia, slothfulness. So these are the three colors with which the universe is painted. These are the three primary colors of the universe. And the painter is Maya, that is why it is in feminine gender. This Maya, the creative power is always feminine. And so this Maya has, a, has painted this whole universe with the three colors, red, black and white. White stands for, you know, Shukla stands for Sattva. And then Rajas is red because it is creative and restless. <coughs> and Tamas here is dark, ignorance, you know, or inertia. So these principles are not only in imbalance, they are problematic. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they, they make this whole universe, these are the colors of her schemes with which she weaves this tapestry of the universe. And then she draws you and you feel stuck because you are part of this tapestry and you say, let me out. First, the gamut of desires makes one say, let me in. One cannot wait to have a body because without the body, how can you go to, you know, how can you go to see a movie? No, no, you can't see. You know, how can you go to a restaurant? You can't go. How can you have fun? How can you run and feel the breeze and smell a flower and, you know, uh, debate on a subject, you can't do all that. You need a mind, you need the karanas, the, the instruments. And so therefore you need a body and a mind, correct? And so therefore the disembodied one, the one who has, who is always around, the jiva, last life, what happened? Nothing much. <laughs> life before that, nothing much by way of spiritual growth I'm talking of. And nothing much. No life before that, nothing much at all. And then this life, a oh, little bit, but nothing much. And then, you know, nothing much means by way of spiritual growth. But then a lot is happening. How? A lot is happening in terms of collecting desires and collecting uh, the, the fruit of one's actions. So one has so much karma and don't know what to do, don't know where to go, keeps getting incarnated. And so much desire one has, the force of the desire makes one take another birth. That's what it is. Because the jiva is clamoring. And you know, I've talked about this before. It, it, those who have read the Tibetan book of death and dying, there they have a belief that the disembodied beings are always hanging around newly <laughs> married couples. Because they are hoping they'll have a baby and I can <laughs> enter that body. <laughs> Even we say that. And we go to the extent to say that every marriage procession has a lot of invisible attendees. <laughs> These jivas who are jostling each other. No, 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 I want to be this one's baby. No, no, no. All right, you'll be the first born, I'll be the second born. And someone else says, no, 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 my desires cannot be wait. You both go away. All right, let's become triplets. You see, this is fun. <laughs> These days, that what is that called? In vitro, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, why in vitro has suddenly started? Why people are having multiple babies? Because we would say it's because all the disembodied jivas mm -hmm. having multiple desires cannot wait to reincarnate number one, number two, number three. They come all at once. 
so you have set taplets you have queen taplets you have all of them survive also because of the you know medical miracles so here what the person says i want in i want in okay you are in the tapestry let me out <laughs> <laughs> this is the cry because that tapestry it's actually so called because it's a trap pastry mm. it traps you <laughs> as though mm. but the feeling is that i am i am in this time space matrix <clears throat> and the time space matrix has these colors the red white and black the sattva rajas tamas i'm trapped i can't go anywhere oh my god help help mm. help and this is a contradictory situation you know First, you say, "Let me in." You want to be embodied. You can't wait. You follow every single marriage procession. You know, even of people who don't want to have children or who can't have children, you follow. And then, what do you do? And then you say, "I really want in." All right, here, have this body. Oh, but I don't like this body. I can't do this. Oh, let me out. What is this? What did I sign up for? And you know, Ishvara is confused. The Lord is confused. You know, Vishnu tells Lakshmi, "I thought they wanted to be reincarnated. I, I just helped them. What happened?" Lakshmi says, "Don't look for logic. <laughs> you know, as far as human beings are concerned, don't look for logic. This is how it is. Every jiva is is crazy enough to be. be it's you know, be a reality channel for Bhagavan, for Ishvara. That's why." The Lord doesn't need cable TV because each one of us is a real, and our antics are reality channels. You can just switch the channel and go for it. Yeah, that's all it is. Very intense and very interesting. And so the 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 the, the second, the first aja is the creative principle, the feminine power of Ishvara, and it is feminine. It is coded as feminine from the standpoint of us ignorance, really, because we cannot go beyond the genders. we always you know even while pursuing non duality we want everything to be feminine masculine like this you know crazy this is why it is so the shruti obliges all right if this is what you want take it because if it helps understanding if we, we, we otherwise you are just going to be frozen and not listen you know all right take it create if you want the creative power to be feminine that's fine but really speaking from our own standpoint it is coded as feminine the upanishad does a lot of gender benders you know very interesting it says purushatma param kinchit atopanishad our earlier class elsewhere it had said there is nothing other than the purusha purusha means that lord which is which fills up everything accommodates everything and then suddenly what that is masculine right the very next line sa kashta sa paragati hi she is the the way she is the ultimate goal how mm. did the he become a she yeah so that you can just blink and don't know what hit you that is how the teaching takes place because if everything is routinized and you just sit there going yeah 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 i'm studying people <laughs> and yeah, nothing happens the, the teaching has to keep you on your toes you have to keep wondering you have to say well, what happened over here and then somebody asks how was the class and, and you say I think you should attend it yourself because <laughs> you don't know what happened, but something happens, yeah. and that's the power of the teaching is that something is happening. You can't just have some kind of a you know planned you know in this country. So always surprising because except for death, they have a re- rehearsal for every function. <laughs> Only death, they don't have a rehearsal with a man lying in or a woman lying in the coffin and people coming and putting one rose. They don't have a rehearsal. Who will go first? Who you know? Death, they leave alone. Yeah, but uh, other things, even wedding rehearsal and everything <laughs> rehearsal. And you know, I went once to you know the wedding. Uh, they said we have we are having wedding rehearsal. Please come and bless it, because I was not going to be there for the wedding. They said, oh, <laughs> "Come and bless the rehearsal." I said, "What is this rehearsal? Let me go," because I thought I could use it in this class. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> "So I went," and they were all so serious. My God! And oh, you have to walk with this kind of steps, and the ring bearer, and the flower girl, the flower child, and this and that. And she's a child. She's five years old. Let her be. And she was just happy, you know. She was pretending to carry a, the, a pretend basket was given to her something. I 
and she was just skipping along. No, 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 you can't walk like that. She's looking, she's pouting, she's like wondering what happened. No, 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 you have to walk like this and you have to do this and all that and everything. She's small. No, no. And then, you know, then they have to do this, they have to do all, the, have this, who is going, how they are going to do cha-cha-cha and who is going to do the first cha-cha-cha and then where they are going to sit. You know, it was the most boring thing I've attended. <laughs> Other than the fact that it came of use right now, it had no purpose <laughs> for them, <laughs> you know. But that's not how the teaching takes place. You don't have Vedanta rehearsal, you know. <laughs> you come in and you you are knocked off your body, mind, sense complex, not socks. That's not fun. You know, you're knocked <laughs> off the body, mind, sense complex. You say, oh my God, what just happened? That is why this verse has that that magic. Because there are three, three infinites. Yeah. How is that possible? One is infinite, you know, infinitely finite, which is that Maya, the creative power that brings, that manifests all names and forms. And what is the other one? You. Oh, the other one, the unhappy one is me. Of course. <laughs> which is what brings one to Vedanta. The second one, the second fellow, is the one who is attached to these Praja of Maya. What is Praja? The children of Maya. What is the child of Maya? All these things we find mm. in the universe. We cannot do without. First they are luxuries. Next generation they become necessities. Mm. Ah, this is what happens. And then I can't live without it. You know, when the people started to purchase cell phones, uh, you know, it was always because they had one scenario in mind. Supposing I'm stranded alone in a highway. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I want to call somebody. And, you know, I want to, you know, I shouldn't be stranded. So, then let me have a cell phone. And then what? Now it even makes coffee. Now it is <laughs> smart co uh, smartphone. It's called smartphone because my smartness has been transferred into it. And what am I? You know, without, I am the opposite of smart because I don't even know my phone number. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Nobody knows their own phone number. Wait, let me look and tell. You can't, what is 4 plus 4? Uh, wait, let me do, let me get the calculator app. <laughs> you, 4 plus 4 you cannot add. No, I can't. Don't waste time. Let the calculator would, will do it. Everything is, one is so dependent on that. It's no longer cell phone. It is hell phone. Because <laughs> if you lose it even for a second, you just, you feel you're in hell. You feel so agitated. You just feel you cannot live without it. And it is, you know, and you know, so what if it, if it is the side effect is a brain tumor, it's okay, you know, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> this is what the whole thing is. And so therefore, this is something we have to understand is that the second Aja, the one who is sleeping, Anushete, sleeps in keeping with the program. What is the program? The program of Maya is mm -hmm. that, that avidya bija, the seed of avidya is there. And so unless one comes to these teachings and unless one has an interest, one is forever sleeping this long sleep of ignorance. That kind of sleep from which there is no impetus to wake up. And in this sleep you are having a wonderful dream and each dream is just going poof, poof, poof and you back to sleep and back to dream. There is no, uh, you know, impetus to wake up. And the final Aja is the one that is Bhukta Bhoga. Bhuktam, you know, that is all Bhogyas are Bhuktam. By whom? Everything that is consumable has already been consumed. How? Not because they have fulfilled all the desires. No. Why has it been con uh, consumed? Why has everything that is fulfilled why has this already, whatever there is to consume has been consumed. Is that possible to taste all the things in the universe? Mm. Yes? Mm. Why are you thinking about it? Of course not. Because how many things are there in the universe? But here it maintains that there is a person, the possibility of a person who has sampled everything in the universe. How is that possible? By going Transcend. to the source. Mm. Ah, if you sample the source, you know, then you have sampled everything mm -hmm. from it. If you know how rice tastes, and if you make idlis from rice flour, it's the same thing. And if you make something else, no class, another something from rice flour, you know how that tastes. 
it's the same thing if you make dosas that is also from rice flour so you know how that tastes because you know the rice flour correct so here you go to the source you don't have to have each and everything discreetly you enjoy everything at once sarvan kaman samashnute like the ray of initiation brahmavid apnoti param the knower of brahman which is the source here which what is brahman yourself the truth of yourself when you know what happens sarvan kaman all the desires are felt are fulfilled fulfilled with one swoop all the desires are fulfilled with one swoop how how is that possible because i have interrogated the the nature of the desiring person the desiring person is a superimposition on brahman which is myself so the desiring person is not real the discontented desiring person is a superimposition due to ignorance that ignorance dismissed the desiring person slithers away like the rope on the snake leaving the rope behind that's what it is that's why it's called a rope so <laughs> you know this is what the whole thing is so therefore the final aja what is that the one who has managed to is the one who has studied this who has who is the enlightened one who has who is no longer entangled in the in the praja of maya not attached to all the you know children of maya meaning things in the samsara meaning it's not that you have to you know here a doubt can come oh do you have to go somewhere and take on orange and then go sit in a cave i don't think i can do that because i do have desires what to do that's not the point the point is to pursue this knowledge but then what about renunciation don't worry it will happen on its own mm-hmm. yeah you morph you know like oh, mm-hmm. what, what is that thing called when the you slough off yes slough off like the snake you know sloughs off the skin when it is tired it knows it goes and hangs itself against the bark of a tree and then leaves the old skin and slithers away in the beginning it is a little painful and difficult so it goes to a shady spot it doesn't let anybody see it because it's vulnerable but then it leaves the old skin behind so this is how all the desires and the longings slough off in the face of this knowledge what kind of longings the longings that are useless longings the longings that leave you with a sense without a sense of belonging that's why it's called longing you keep on longing and this longing falls away because that longing really is for the truth of yourself so the first one you you have two scenarios here in this samsara the one who is trapped continues to sleep and the other one what the other one wakes up and goes away because the spoof of the jagat is called the spoof of this samsara is called and you know how jahati jahati from heart to abandon third conjugation how heart to abandon and that has some kind of a reduplicative effect so it is vipsa ha ha and jaha so jahati ena mukta bhogam ajo mukta bhogam jahati because everything has already enjoyed there is nothing more to enjoy because i am enjoying myself and if that myself is everything you know there is nothing more to do but how does get one get from point a to point b this is what needs to be discussed <laughs> sounds very nice but how do you go there and we'll take a little digression into the bhagavad gita I mean, what does the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita also says you know uh, lord krishna says to arjuna nistrayunyo bhava arjuna nirdvandho nitya satvastha you know and he, here arjuna is told please transcend the three gunas very easy okay satva fine bye bye rajas bye bye tamas bye bye how to transcend that means i should sleep at night i should be like an owl you know tamas means to sleep no no transcend the gunas in terms of the transcend their imbalances how to transcend the imbalance sometimes i'm in a bad mood how to translate transcend the bad mood i can't help it 
I am in a bad mood. Well, here he says there is a little trick. Mm. And what is the trick? Catch hold of sattva. Mm. Kindness, godliness, cleanliness, shaucha, you know, compassion. All these things you catch hold of. Forgiveness, non-resentment, reaching out to help people, you catch hold of that. Oh, but that's so hard. That's the point. <laughs> that's the whole point. Catch hold of dharma, catch hold of sattva, and then, you know, eschew rajas and tamas. How? By stopping. We have some small tips we can help us. In. Stop procrastinating. You know, tamas goes away. Tamas goes away by stopping procrastination. Because tamas means, ah, why do I have to do this? Why have to do this now? And then you don't do laundry for six weeks. And then what happens? All you have left is one hanky to cry into. That's the only use <laughs> of it. Because you have to do now ten loads of laundry from the last six weeks. And then you need something to wear the next day. So you wash everything quickly, quickly. And you put more in each wash. And then it clogs up. And then you have to simultaneously call the electrician and the plumber, which is, you know, and of course it's uh, over time because it's after hours. This is what it is. And that's why the hanky comes in handy, the clean <laughs> hanky, because by this time you are a puddle. Okay? <laughs> so you can use the hanky and squeeze it out. That's all it is. So the procrastination, the, see the tamas builds upon tamas and tamas causes rajas, anger, resentment. So first is inertia because of the procrastination and the procrastination then makes one angry because things are not done on time. So you want to hurry everything and you want to don't do things on time and then you get angry with yourself. I know I could do better. Why did I do this? Why do I also always do this? And you beat yourself up. Self-flagellation, you know. This is also a, a, a manifestation of rajas and tamas. And so no procrastination is really the key to letting go of tamas. Mm. And mm. how do you let go of rajas? You, 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 you know, you have pratipaksha bhava, means however you are feeling, you do the opposite of that. How to do the opposite of how I am feeling? If you are resentful, go ahead, go out of your way to be compassionate to yourself, be nice to yourself. Mm. If you are angry with somebody, give them a flower. But I don't feel like, doesn't matter what you don't feel like doing. Doesn't matter the feelings, override the feelings. That's the point of the free will here. You are using the free will to hang on to sattva. And then the rajas and tamas recede into the background. This is how to become nistrai gunya. But what about sattva? That also has to be given up. Don't worry about that now. Let's look at the rajas and tamas. Sattva is in fact very close to your real nature which is Satchidananda, you know. So therefore, you catch hold of that which is close to your nature and the other two which are interlopers, we deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So no procrastination. Procrastination is not my destination. That is the mantra. You can write it out. <laughs> so procrastination takes care of tamas. What about restlessness and anger? How is that? That is by following the opposite mantra to what is there in the mind. If you are feeling resentful and angry at somebody, immediately buy them, and now it's holiday season, buy them some chocolates or flowers, give it to them. No, but I don't want to give it to them. Give it to them like this. Don't look at them. <laughs> and you know, uh, Swamiji, Pujya Swamiji, my teacher used to say that if you, and in, in the ashram, if anybody was angry with anybody, he would make the, uh, the person who complained give flowers to the other person for 48 days in a row. Mm. <laughs> Every single day. Not just one day. Because one day you can just say, take, throw. My teacher told, take it and go away. No. So the first day you give it like this. Second day you give it like this and you can't help steal a look. Let's see how that idiot is enjoying my flowers. <laughs> <laughs> steal a look. Third day you can't help look. Fourth day you have to smile because they are smiling. And then by the fifth day maybe you don't need, you can save the money and need not buy the flowers. Sometimes it takes 48 days because there is a core issue. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, Rishu means it's coring into you. Yeah. <laughs> like an apple, you core an apple. So this is a core <coughs> issue. It has made the core hardened. It has to be thawed out. It has to be thawed out. So these are what is called Pratipaksha Bhava means you you act not in accordance, you go out of your way to not in a, act in accordance to your feelings. And the rising emotions of anger, resentment, fear and all these things, you don't coddle them. You know, here in this country, you coddle all these things. You swaddle them and coddle them. Oh, I'm feeling angry. There is a you know feeding bottle for this little baby, you know, rockabye baby. And you know, oh, I'm resentful. Yes, of course, I need, I have a reason to be resentful. Look at what kind of parentage I came from. Of course, I am resentful. How else will I be? Oh, now I'm not only resentful, but also miserable. <laughs> One becomes, feels like a victim. So if you take on these identities which are not you, then where is your agency? Where is your agency? You just sit and feel resentful and that, and you stew in the resentment and you make a casserole out of the resentment and you, and you have to eat that. And then you're upset even more. So stop it in its tracks and act out of character. Out of character means out of its character. That's how to get out of this tapestry, tapestry, trapestry, whatever it is, the mayik trap, tapestry, you get out of that by calling the bluff. And instead of saying this resentment is real because that person did the wrong thing, in Vedanta there are no pointing fingers except here. Hmm. You know, if you want Vedanta in one sentence, it is you spot it, you got it. Hmm. It's what Vedanta <laughs> is. <laughs> that is Vedanta in one sentence and one sentence alone. So really speaking, if you say that person is the cause of my misery, you know, and, you know, really speaking, that's wrong. So you gently bring bring the finger back, you know, and it's not blaming yourself. It's taking a look at yourself in the gentle light of the knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Actually, that finger you bend, you know, you bend. This is ahankara, mm. I notion. You bend that and you join it. With, with this which is which stands for Brahman. And this is the body mind sense complex. And this becomes chin mudra. Nothing to do with the chin. Chin chit mudra. Chin mudra. That is what it is. Meaning you are not the body mind sense complex. You are that which is the supports like the thumb, that which supports the whole universe without acting on its own. You are that. Tatvamasi in sign language. A S L Tatvamasi, you know? Yeah, ASL means ancient sign language. Yeah, this is <laughs> that's what I see in sign language. You are that. You are that which you see. So this pointing finger is is out of anger and resentment, and and there I have to bend because I see that this resentment is also Ishvara. It's a manifestation of God, and then that which causes the resentment is also a manifestation of God. My reactivity is a manifestation of God and that I can override the reactivity with accommodation and compassion is also a manifestation of God. This is how I grow out of Rajas and Tamas. All, and I can't do that without holding on to Sattva. That Sattva allows me to act compassionately when I don't feel like it, when I don't want to. It allows me to act nicely, it allows me to act compassionately, even when I don't want to, repeatedly. And then what, as a result of that, I grow. I grow into a person that is sattvic. So what happens after that, I have to leave the sattva to, no you don't, it goes by itself. How does the sattva go? There is a very beautiful metaphor. It's not a metaphor, it's, a, it's an ancient practice. So like for example, in the, in the ancient days when you burn the inter, the, not inter, but the cremate the dead bodies. So the dead bodies you put on the fire and the family would watch for some time and go away. But the funeral groundskeeper had to be there all the time till everything was burned to the cinder and then collect the ashes and give it to the family the next day. That was their job. Even now in certain places that is their job. Why does the funeral ground keeper it needs to be there? Because the body is, is a complex, you know, material and there are certain gases and liquids and everything and sometimes the force of the gases, the, the body gets up from the fire. 
It's not that the person has come back from life. It's the action of the various gases and the liquids in the body. It makes it look like the person is getting up from the fire. So the funeral ground keeper always has a big stick with which he's pushing the body back into the fire, the dead body, and making sure it's burnt. Hmm. And then after that, what does he do with the stick? Once the body is settled down, he throws it into the fire. <laughs> that is the stick is sattva. You use the sattva to stop all the reactivity. And then the fire is the fire of knowledge. And it is it is absorbed into that. Because it's really, sattva is you. Sattva is Satchidananda. It's the closest thing to Satchidananda. So really speaking, getting out of the trap of Maya means overcoming, you know, overcoming this duality. And this duality is now talked about in a very delightful way in the next uh, in the next mantra. Dvasuparna sayuja sakhaya. Vasuparna sayuja sakhaya. Samanam vriksham parishasva jate. Samanam viksham parishasva jate. Tayoranya pippalam swadu vati. Tayoranya pippalam swadu vati. Swadu vati. Anashnan nanyaha. Anashnan nanyaha. Abhicha kashiti. Abhicha kashiti. Yeah. Tayoranyaha pippalam. So when that visarga contacts pakara or pakara, this sound comes. That is called upadmanya. So it's a silent sandhi. So tayoranyaf pippalam swadu vatti. Yeah. And to illustrate that, we have a verse, very nice verse. You know, kak. And then when the kakara encounters visarga, ach sound. Ach. Kakah Krishnaha, Kakah Krishnaha, Pikah Krishnaha, Kakah Krishnaha, the crow is black. Kakah means crow. Pikah Krishnaha, the nightingale is also black. That has nothing to do with what we chanted, except that there are also two birds. So there is, <laughs> that's, that's where the similarity ends. But we'll discuss that later. This is a pronunciation digression. Kakah Krishna, Pikah Krishnaha. Pika Krishna. Pika abhi Krishna. Pika means nightingale is also black. Ko bhedaha pika ka kayo ho. What is the difference between the crow and the nightingale? This is how we teach children the pronunciation in Sanskrit, you know. Then the answer is wait. Vasanta kale samprapte. Wait for the spring to come, you know. Vasanta kale samprapte. When the spring arrives, you know kaka kaka pikaf pikaha. You know that the crow is crow and the nightingale is nightingale. Even though they are both black in color, you know which is which. Let the spring come. Let let the nightingale start to warble and the crow just goes ka 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 all the time. You will know immediately. Let the spring come. They will open their mouths and then only you will know. So then, when the kakara encounters visarga. It becomes ah sam. Kaka kaka. Kaka kaka. Kaka Krishna pika Krishna. Ko bheda. Ko bheda pika kaka yo ho. Vasanta kale sam prate. Kaka kaka pika pika. This is how you pronounce. And then you are asked to do it very quickly. That's how you learn. You know? so anyhow, so these are the two visarga sounds. It is good to have because. Your uh, diction, your Sanskrit diction is very good, it's excellent. And so I just wanted to give you this little tip so that next time when you chant, it is, uh, you know, he's very good, yes. very, very, very good. I'm very happy. So that's why I wanted to teach you this little, uh, little uh, extra. So, as I said, that was a digression <laughs> where we discussed two birds. Here also we are discussing two birds. Dva Suparna. Suparna here means two birds. So this is Vedic Sanskrit. So sometimes there is poetic license. Actually it should be Dvau, Suparnau, Sayujau, Sakhayau. Okay. But what does it say? Dva Suparna, Sayuja, Sakhaya. Shall we correct the Veda? No. Never. <laughs> Why? Because it is revealed knowledge. 
we take it as poetic license because it's in the form of poetry. You know, sometimes in poetry also we make all these different alankaras, you know, figures of speech. So here, the, 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 this is a very famous mantra which is there also in the Mundaka Upanishad, which we haven't encountered yet, but we will. And uh, so, Dvahu Suparna, Suparna means shining wings. Dvahu, two birds with shining golden, you know, beautiful wings. Sayujau Sakhayau, they are actually, you know, great friends. And they are embracing one another on the same tree. Samanam Vrikshe, Samanam Vrikshe, Parishasvajate, Parishasvajate means they are constantly hugging, giving, hugging each other. Maybe they are lovebirds, you know, they are whispering sweet nothings to one another. They are obviously very attached to each other. And they both are looking alike. They have the same golden wings. And then here is where the similarity ends. What are they doing, if you ask? What are they doing? Tayor Anyaha Pippalam Swadvati. Swadvati means, uh, you know, tasting. Atti eats. Swadu Atti Swadvati. So, eats and taste, tastefully eats. What? Pippalam. Pippala means berries. What kind of berries? What kind of berries? Sometimes sweet, sometimes, sometimes bitter. In fact, mostly bitter. Once in a while sweet. Bitter berries, rotten berries, pungent berries. So this bird is a berry holic. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very alarming. Because you can see it is stuck to the berries. Cannot go away from the berries. And what is the other one doing? The other one is also eating? No. Anash, none, without eating. Anyaha, the other one. Abhijakashiti. Abhijakashi from Chakasra Deeptau. It just to be here, two meanings. One is, it is simply looking. But since the root verb Chakasra Deeptau, in the sense of lighting up, it's lighting up the actions of the other. Very cryptic verse. So two birds... One is only watching, not eating. And the other one is eating, eating, eating. Giving itself indigestion, but keeping on eating. And then after a while it's sad that the sweet berries did not come and goes again after the berries. And then what? And then it gets the rotten berry, pungent berry, unripe berry, overripe berry, oh, little bit sweet berry. But again after that, bad berry. This is the... These are the two birds. And the other one is simply watching, blessing the one that is restlessly going after the berries. And this mantra is very nice coming after the other one because it shows that there is a difference between these two, you know, these two entities, these two birds. How many birds are really there? One. Then why is it two? Because of my own ignorance, mm. I feel there are two beings inhabiting this body. So Vedanta means what? Non-duality starts here. Mm. Right here is the duality. Two beings inhabiting the same body, body-mind complex. How? Because sometimes I can be very calm, I can be wonderful, I can be just so giving, I can be so loving, I can be so accommodative. Oh, that's fine. You know, you just broke my most prized possession. It's okay. You know, I don't mind at all. After all, what is that? In fact, you saved me because, you know, otherwise I would have to think of how to uh, protect it. And uh, now I can need not pay the insurance on this object because now the object is gone. Thank you for helping me grow spiritually. Sometimes I'm like that. Other times, you know, all the person has to do is look at me and say, why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me like that? No, I'm just looking. Why are you looking? You know? These two beings are inhabiting. Right here in the same body-mind sense complex, there appear two beings. The one who is watchful, who is the witness, who sees that I'm not part of this drama. 
you know i'm only interested in drama without the d <laughs> no drama and the other one is a drama king a drama queen completely committed to the drama these two beings are in her and there is the big split and there is the cry and there is the cry for help sos you know hey and how to resolve the two how to sometimes they don't even see each other you know they are like uh, you know facing back to back how to resolve the two when the upanishad says that there is actually one so there is no resolution required oh there is only one then which one and one is hoping <laughs> which one is real will the real bird please stand up and the real bird show its wings because if there if the two is one is the shadow and one is the reality which is the real and one has the fingers crossed fingers eyes nose and toes all are crossed why are they crossed because why why are they crossed what is the hope what is the desire which one should be real the sitting yeah the simply sitting one the simply sitting swami bird mm-hmm. should be real <laughs> the one who is free of you know all kinds of disenchantments this up and down and the one who just is watching without going you know without being addicted to the fruit of action because action and fruit of action is what the berries and the eating of the berries symbolize so the one that is free the one who says aha the retired bird oh is it 65 it's not 65 but it it was you know it was never even born and it was retired to begin with beginning less but retired but how can it be t- retired because if you are not retired to begin with you are just tired so <laughs> <laughs> this bird doesn't do anything because it has retired for it has repaired itself from this saga you know from this saga of samsara in fact it is not, not even repaired itself it is unassociated from this saga called samsara this whole up and down this turmoil it has it is it is uninvolved that is the real one and everybody hopes i i i pray that that is the real one why because one wants to be that one wants that beyond anything else one hopes to be that one wants to be that and one says i really want and wish to be that okay that you are already that who oh, i am that yes you are that oh thank god now what to do about this other bird ayo the other bird doesn't Nothing. exist no but what to do about the other bird it's like the person who went outside in twilight and saw a something with three bends you know and then cried snake eek and came running in and so the person who was in the house let's say the teacher took the person <laughs> out with the flashlight the flashlight of the upanishad was shined upon the snake and then it was revealed to be what no so the snake was just aropa see that's how the word you know the ancient sages knew that the word rope would mean rope <laughs> they had a word called aropa which means superimposition so the snake is a superimposition the snake is where is the snake now the question is the student had a question okay the student first said ha oh, thank you let me drink some water so to <laughs> open his water bottle and drank some water this fellow you know he or she just you know and uh, then said guru guru walk it guru i have a question what is the question where is the snake now because i'm still scared <laughs> <laughs> you know now we have shown this it is not on the rope it is not in the rope it is not underneath the rope but maybe it slithered somewhere in the bushes <laughs> and then it will come back on the rope again as long as you are here i'm not scared but if you go away and take away this flashlight of the upanishad then you know what will happen is that the snake will inhabit re-inhabit the rope what do you tell what do you tell the student now huh? what will you tell do 
don't say I'm also a student. What will I tell? No, <laughs> you, have to, you have to look into the into into the matter. What will you tell this student? Do you have to take the student on the tour? That's why. Yeah. yeah, you know, do you have to take the student on the whole tour of the garden and shine everywhere and show there is no snake? No. You just say that the snake is non-existent. Rope and snake are they synonyms? Are they synonyms? No. No, they are not synonyms. Why? Because the rope is a locus, adhishthana, for adhyasa, for the superimposition, which is a wrong notion and wrong understanding. And here the adhish, adhyasa is what? What is the snake represent? The snake, the snake represents myself as karta bhokta, myself as the actor, the doer and the done in. This is the problem. First I do, do, do and then I feel done in. First I am the agent, then I am the victim of my own doing. Victim, agent, victim, agent, berry, berry, this berry, that berry, <laughs> I keep eating. And then what? You know, the bird eats the berries and eats, 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 overeats and then has to spend three days in the bathroom and then comes back and starts eating again. Oh, why me? That is the refrain. Poor me. Why me? This is what? Bhokta. No, no, no. I'm Now I'm recovered. I can do a few things. I have to, I have to get going. I have to do, 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 do. And then karta. This karta bhokta. This is a split personality. This is what the whole thing is. And here, it is beautifully resolved by saying what? This karta bhokta is like the snake, which is adhyasa, which is adhyasta over the rope. That rope is free of karthritvam, free of bhaktritvam, free of doership, free of enjoyership, free of suffering and free of doing both. And this rope is you. The rope is benign. The snake is the sum total of your own projected fears and desires. Fears mostly because it is nivritti. Mm. Yeah, it's not pravritti, it's nivritti because you want to go away from it. So your own fear has conjured up the snake. And so you cannot ask, where did the snake go? You know, where it went is, it resolved into that same place where, from whence it was projected. So it resolved because the light of the Shastra was shown upon the situation. So here also the light of the Upanishad is shown upon the situation with these two birds, because really speaking there is one bird. And this other bird, which is going and collecting berries and eating berries and is very sad, the sad bird is, is, is like the snake. The sad bird does not have an existence. It is a projection of one's own fears and is the sum total of unfulfilled desires and fears make up this second bird. This is what is the setup here. We have to understand properly. And then going further, if we have time, no we don't, but you know, just for fun we'll read the next one because it's not fun to leave it at this note. Yeah. <laughs> Samane vrikshe purusho ni magnaha Samane vrikshe purusho ni magnaha Anishaya shochati mukhya manaha. Anishaya shochati mukhya manaha. Yeah, we'll take it slowly. Samane vrikshe. Samane vrikshe. Purusho ni magnaha. Purusho ni magnaha. Anishaya shochati. Anishaya shochati. Mukhya manaha. Mukhya manaha. Jushtain yada. Jushtain yada. Pashyati. Pashyati. Anyamisham. Anyamisham. Asya mahimanam. Asya mahimanam. Iti vita shokaha. Iti vita shokaha. Yeah. So, now he says, now the Upanishad says that these are not two birds at all. Yeah. In this tree of life, so to speak, in this tree of samsara that we saw in the last class, 
द पर्सन इज ड्रावनिंग पुरुषः निमग्नः ड्रावनिंग इन व्हाट वन्स ओन टीयर्स रिमेंबर द वन्स दैट वाज स्क्वीज्ड फ्रॉम द हैंकी यू नो ड्रावनिंग इन द टीयर्स एंड फियर्स हाउ अनीशया शोचति has separated itself from ishvara mm. which is that bird which is giving sustenance to this bird real has separated itself from itself it's alienated mukhyamana ha deluded it cries and all it has to do jushtam yada when it identifies pashyati ekam isham you know when it sees that this is what i want to be this is who i am when it identifies with that then what asya mahimanam it shares its glory and becomes what it is in fact uh, you know not shares it takes on its mm-hmm. own glory it, uh, it it owns up its own glory and it becomes vita shoka vigatah shoka yasmat from which all shoka what is shoka sorrow has departed it becomes free mm-hmm. that we'll see next time when is the next class it's on the ashram website i think uh, january mm-hmm. january 2nd and 3rd yeah soon after the new year okay yeah. om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamibhavishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om any questions you can ask you can ask if you have any questions